everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be briefly demonstrating some of the ways I've been using artificial intelligence to discover new ideas and different ways of doing things, but also to assist me in my coursework, such as catching grammar mistakes or helping me to better understand a word or phrase. The applications are really quite endless, and you'll sort of get a glimpse of that right now. We'll be using OpenAI's latest chat GPT uh, user interface. So to get started, head on over to openai.com and go ahead and sign up for a free account. Once you do, head over to playground.openai.com, which is what you see here. Uh, I did want to briefly just show you the playground. Uh, I've been using it all year for all sorts of different things, really, uh, but mainly generating real content for the websites I'm designing uh, rather than the old lorem ipsum dummy text. So anyway, let me just show you a quick example. Right now I'm just typing, write a sample 250 word college dis discussion post. And as soon as you click submit, it does just that. It writes me a sample 250 word college discussion post. Now you can get as detailed as you want. Uh, the more detailed actually, the uh, better the results. So down below you can click that chat GPT button where it says looking for chat GPT three or chat GPT, I'm sorry that's actually what uh, today's video is going to be about. I'm actually designing a sort of a drone fleet application using Java and uh, Java FX. So we're going to just uh, ask ChatGPT some questions today, see if it can't help me to better understand the complexity of this application and to kind of give me some pointers, advice on uh, where to go. So yeah. So we'll just uh, kind of give ChatGPT a brief description of the application that I have in my head. Um, I've already started sort of designing the user interface that I'll show you uh, later on in the video. But uh, yeah, what are some key considerations for such an application? And almost instantly, it spits out uh, exactly what you ask it for. Key considerations, safety, uh, reliability, etc. So that is awesome. Uh, you could use this uh, text for helping you write like a business plan or um, really anything. Uh, it's it's all organic. It's all original. Uh, if you ask it the same question again, you're going to get uh, similar but different response. So it's not plagiarism. Uh, it's it's unique organic neural linguistics or natural language. Basically, it's just turning uh, what you ask it for and it's it's sifting through a huge neural network of, of uh, you know the, the human language and it's just trying to figure out based on what you typed uh, how to how to accurately respond to it so artificial intelligence for the win guys and uh, now I'm just asking it um, what are some elements to be considered uh, for the job FX application and it tells me uh, the layout, uh, UI elements, etc., responsiveness. So that is awesome. Now we'll just ask, uh, what might you know the user interface look like for such a program, and see what happens. And there you have it. Uh, it just starts telling you, hey, uh, without knowing more information, it's kind of hard to say, but uh, it would probably have a map view. It would probably have you know other elements control panel, etc. So cool. Now I am just going to skip over uh, this next part a little bit so I can show you how to get chat GPT to actually begin writing the program for me. I'm just going to input show me some sample Java code since it already has a rough understanding of how the application is going to work. But essentially the big chat thread is exactly that it's a session where the computer AI is actively attempting to learn based on your conversation. So you can start to confuse the program if your input starts to become off topic. If that happens, you can fix your mistake by correcting the computer AI, or you can simply start over by clicking the new chat button in the top left. Yeah, so as you can see here, the AI is now attempting to write some of the sample or skeleton Java program for us. It imports a Java library list and then defines a class drone controller which is then used to establish a connection to the drones, and it retrieves the coordinates for our flight path, which are stored as GPS coordinates in a Java list. Really, really neat. And it even looks like it creates a new method, send light show command, which 
appears to pass the RGB variables to our drones to control or set the RGB color value of the light attached to the drone. And of course, not only does it give us the sample Java code, it actually will tell us or explain uh, what exactly that code does. So that is awesome. Now I'm gonna say, what if I wanted to use RTK to control my fleet of drones? Um, and not only does it tell me how, it starts by first explaining what RTK is, and then it lists, uh, it starts coding it for me. Looks like it's listing all those imports we're gonna need. And I wanna see if it finds an RTK library. And yeah, there it is. So Java just found our libraries we're gonna be using for our drone application. So it's basically cutting down on a whole bunch of research and development. All right, now let's ask the AI after that gets done, what motors it thinks we should use for our custom built quadcopters. So let's just wait for it to finish. Really cool, and we can always come back to that later, copy and paste it. Uh, so it almost immediately starts off by saying, well, it depends, which is perfectly acceptable because there are a lot of unknown variables that the AI still doesn't quite understand, like how we're powering the drones or what other hardware we'll be using. So good answer. Now it's explaining, you know, what those unknowns sort of are. The first being size and weight, next being power requirements, efficiency, reliability, and finally cost. Uh, the most common motor used in a drone is the brushless DC motor. So yeah, it kind of already knows what motors I'm already using for my drone, so that's cool. Now let's ask for a shopping list, if you will, just by asking it, you know, what parts do I need if I were to 3D print my own frame? Well, it starts by saying, uh, you probably are gonna need a 3D printer. And then the motors, of course, uh, propellers, ESC modules, uh, what else? Flight controller and radio transmitter and receiver. Nice, so that is super helpful. Going back to the code, let's ask it to write our base station class. But I wanna incorporate Mavlink, so after it gets done with that, we can correct our input phrase by telling it to incorporate Mavlink. Uh, it again starts by sort of explaining what Mavlink is and how it connects to a ground control station. It even goes over several URLs of where to get the sample code and documentation. It looks like it gets hung up here, so now I can just say, well, go on, and it starts writing the code for us almost instantly. This time it names our Java class GCS, short for ground control station, very cool. And it looks like it stops writing our code after the start method, so we can ask it to continue and it almost immediately picks up where it left off. Anyways, well, that's about all I wanted to show you for this video as far as chat GPT. I did briefly want to show you the UI design I've been working on in Photoshop for the drone application. So let me just switch over and here we have it. I'm hoping to do sort of a cross between Blender and Premiere Pro, a 3D modeling software, but for drone light shows essentially. And finally, I wanted to close out this video by just showing you uh, where some of the software UI inspiration is coming from. I found this company called droneshowsoftware.com. It has uh, several YouTube videos and imagery throughout their website of drone light show applications or, or their specific application. So I'm essentially reverse engineering some of these fancier programs in an effort to create sort of a safe and affordable aerial drone light show. Anyway, that is it for today. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.